coming off a 13-10 campaign. It's been a struggle this year. Injuries have been costly. None bigger than the one that took Robert Ford III, a Portland native, out of the lineup for the season back in December. He was their top scorer and rebounder as a six-foot guard, a transfer from Clackamas committed to college last year. He will seek a medical redshirt. A.J. Bergen, one of two impact newcomers on the roster, misses that try from three-point range, but the Bengals able to retrieve the rebound. This is a very good rebounding a defensive team last year, although their production has slumped in both of those areas this season. They come in with just a 7-20 and 20 mark, but they're on the board first with a layup by Austin Spaley. And you see them right away looking to get to the interior of this Vikings defense. Obviously not as big as we've seen in some past lineups on display. Nice bucket there for Idaho State. Every key rotation piece uh, back for Idaho State this season from that winning campaign. They finished fourth in the Big Sky Conference, tied for fourth in 2020-21. Carter the third in the heart of the defense nearly had it stripped away. Ball gets out to Alley, who cuts away from three, and down it goes. He's shooting 33.3% from downtown. His scoring average up near 11 points a game now. A steal for Ian Burke. Oh. Burke at the rim can't finish. And Smelly pulls down the rebound. Burke has earned his degree here at Portland State, although he does have a athletic season left to him. Nice look inside as Smelly locates Bergen down low for the bucket. I mistakenly said uh, Bergen earlier when it was Liam Sorensen taking that first three for Idaho State. Bergen gives the Bengals a 4-3 lead with that bucket as uh, Khalid Thomas didn't have a good grip on the basketball, but he gets a second try and is able to put it down. That's how you stick with it there. He knew he lost control initially, and he was able to time it better than anybody else being able to retrieve the second chance board and finish. 5-4 Portland State lead. They play tight, harassing defense on the perimeter, and that forces another Idaho State turnover as Liam Sorensen's pass to the wing goes wanted. And this Vikings team, that's what they like to do, is be pesty out there defensively. A lot of guards, but they move their feet well. They switch just about everything, and they try to turn you over. Had success on that possession. Bergen and Sorensen along with Smelly, Rodriguez, and there's a bucket for Portland State as the Vikings take a 7-4 lead. Khalid Thomas felt like he had a slower foot defender on him, and he proved to be right. Galloping left of the lane, Sorensen able to finish. Braden Parker there for the putback basket. All interior baskets for the Bengals here to start, and good help defense there. Ball loose on the floor, and looks like the Vikings may catch a break here. There's no Bengals in the vicinity to scoop it up. Malik Porter into the game off the bench. He had a Huge game Thursday night in Flagstaff with 19 points in that 70 to 66 Bengal victory. Wild start to that one as Northern Arizona got out to a 13 nothing start and then Idaho State responded with a 16 nothing run, 29 to six before all was said and done and went on for the road victory. Turnovers were critical in that game. Pull up Jay by Thomas. Oh mercy, not much you can do with that in the late quarter. Three straight buckets for Thomas and a 9-6 PSU lead. Khalid Thomas filling it early here, flexing on his way back down court. He's primed for a good one tonight. He was a very confident shooter Thursday night, knocking down five of seven from downtown. His best shooting performance outside the arc and an unforced error there as Rodriguez lost the handle on a crossover dribble, already the third Idaho State turnover. Again, the Vikings defensively, they can stay with you step for step. They got a lot of speed on the floor, and Idaho State's going to have to get themselves under control going up against that. Coming out of the high post now, Thomas, rangy 6'10", playing the five with the lineup change. For the most part, the Vikings will bring in Jacob Iman and Hayden Curtis off the bench. Long three on the way for Damian Squire. Doesn't go. Porter, a very good rebounder, falls it down. Squire might be rediscovering his three-point shooting touch. Hasn't really been there as a Viking, although the scoring punch has been evident. He's able to score in a number of ways. Good screen by Bergen. Frees up Smaley for three. No go, but Bergen right there for the rebound. And ISU gobbling up offensive boards in the early going. 
These are two of the top offensive rebounding teams in the Big Sky Conference. Although Idaho State comes in at a rebounding disadvantage on the season, a strong move to the iron, and Porter is able to finish. Again, all eight points have been in the paint, and that lands no good there from Squire. That bad English for the Canadian, Damian Squire from Montreal, presumably English is first language. <laughs> Not the case for James John Marie, who was the Vikings leading scorer and rebounder before being dismissed from the team. That was around the Vikings turnaround, bit of addition by subtraction as they say. Oh, wraparound pass, somehow finds its way to Porter and he scores. I don't know that we can give Bergen the assist on that, but Porter makes it count. Either way, the trend remains. 10 points in the paint thus far for the Bengals to start this game. And that's the way they like to do it. Damian Squire through contact with guard. Inch for inch, probably the best rebounder in college basketball last year. Yes, yeah, certainly. He was not afraid to get in there and just snag boards and really just do the dirty work. And it helped him out tremendously. He certainly missed right now. Talk to the Portland native just before game time. He is out for the year with a stress fracture. Does uh, intend to pursue a medical red shirt. We'll have another year of eligibility at least coming back as Squire knocks down both free throws. And Damian Squire now 37 of 39 at the line for Portland State this year. Vikings regain the advantage 11 to 2. As Porter muscles his way inside against uh, Khalid Thomas. Rebound pulled down by Jared Rodriguez. Throws it out to the wing where Sorensen is able to track it down. So four offensive boards, six second chance points already for the Idaho State Bengals. They go back to Porter now, facing off against Jacob Iman. And that jumper comes up short. Iman in there to scoop up the rebound. Right, the Vikings will give it right back on a turnover. Carter the third, passed into the back of Khalid Thomas's head there. Thomas never saw the ball coming. It's Idaho State basketball. Khalid Thomas, Ezekiel Alley, the only two Vikings whose eligibility will expire at the end of this year. Tough lob into a double team and coming from the weak side to swat it away is Thomas. As Michael Starks checks into the game off the bench for Portland State. Rugged defensive guard replacing Damian Squire. Rodriguez goes to the sideline. And Daxton Carr, the hometown boy for Pocatello, 6'7", sophomore forward, checks in. Marlon Ruffin also into the game for Portland State. Boy, how good has he been off the bench lately? Certainly been giving him a lot of production off the bench. Giving him depth in that regard. Porter has his shot swatted by Thomas, and the shot clock expires. That'll go as another Idaho State turnover. So the Vikings doing what they have been doing. Forcing turnovers over the last nine games, nearly 20 turnovers forced per game, nearly 10 steals per contest. Bad entry pass, too tall for Jacob Iman, so Carter the third a little off on his touch in the early going. Now Sorensen near side wing, up top to Carr. Smaley, one on one with Marlon Ruffin. Ruffin will switch off on Sorensen now. Shot clock at 10. Starks very tough on ball. Time running short for Idaho State as Carr has to put it up. Missed the rip. Somehow tipped up and nearly in by Porter. But I'm in there to clear the glass. Great defensive possession for PSU. Carter in the lane with the floater. Doesn't get the roll. And I'm in a road grader inside. But he was being held. That foul will be called on Idaho State's Daxton Carr. I've been coming in and helping out where the Vikings needed, just giving them presence on the interior. That time we saw him use that body to get good position, and he was fouled because of it. So the Vikings getting manhandled on the glass for the early going. Carter whips it out to Starks. Ruffin crossing over on Carr. Great no-look pass, good defensive recovery. And three-second violation is called against Jacob Iman. That's the third consecutive Viking turnover. Speaking of rebounding, the Vikings didn't have a single offensive rebound in the first half Thursday night against Weber State, but actually out-rebounded the Wildcats 
in the second half, and the biggest bucket of the game was a put-back basket by Michael Carter the third. Three launched up and in by Terry Cool. Cool, hometown boy as well. Coming off the bench tonight for Idaho State, their leading returning scorer, and leading them in scoring again this campaign with 12 per game. Ruffin being harassed defensively on the sideline, and a foul will be called on the push. Cool picks up his first personal. Parker back into the game. Bergen will return to the action for Idaho State. And Ian Burke returns to the fray along with Ezekiel Alley for Portland State. Starks to inbound for the baseline. Miami native out of Palmetto High School. Played short minutes at the University of Georgia last year before transferring to PSU. And Ruffin. Malik Porter with four points to lead the Bengals. Khalid Thomas scored six consecutive points on three trips down the floor. He leads the Vikings. Marlon Ruffin at the line. Misfires on the first free throw. 79% foul shooter this season. He is just under 10 points per game for PSU. And not able to connect on either free throw. Vikings have enviable scoring balance. You've got four double-figure scores, and then Ruffin at 9.9. Airmail for three, and Iman collects. Starks with the free throw line jumper. Nice J, Michael Starks, I see you. All tied to 13. A.J. Bergen, the freshman from San Diego, cool with a rainmaker three that's off the mark. Tara Cool coming off the bench. He's been a bit cool over the last few games. Alley loses the handle. Ahead to Cool. Starks beats him to the spot. Open at the free throw line. Parker bakes it in. I don't know if he caught it, but it counts. <laughs> I'm going to wager no on that. Starks, muscular finish. Back-to-back -back buckets Starks for Michael playing, Starks. Starks playing aggressive offensively here, something you like to see, an added bonus for this Vikings team when he does so. And another Idaho State turnover. Starks scans the floor as he crosses the timeline. 15 all, PSU in the home white and green. Idaho State, the visiting black and orange. Alley's three rims off. Smaley runs down the rebound. Vikings knocked down 11 three-pointers in Thursday night's win. Bergen can't connect from deep. Oh, good bounce pass. Another good catch by Hyman, but he's stripped of the basketball. Cool. Counted in a foul. Ian Burke got him across the arm. Cool. A player you got to watch can be a very dynamic scorer. And here early on, he is not afraid to try to go get those buckets. Terry Cool, a couple of years ago in a non-conference game, put up 41 points on the road against the Air Force Academy. So he can light it up. Native of Chandler, Arizona, although born here in Portland and went to community college at Lane down in Eugene. Converts the three-point play. It's a three-point Idaho State lead as we cross the midway point of the first half. Terry Cool, 27 points against the Vikings back on December the 2nd, but PSU able to come away with the road win as Alley is hit on the way up. That foul will be assessed to Jared Rodriguez. Alley is just so shifty, hard to stay in front of. And a couple of times we've seen him lose control of it here early on, but that time he showed why he's been hard to guard as of late. Now the two main newcomers for Idaho State here, both both coming by way of San Diego. A.J. Bergen out of San Diego High School. And Jared Rodriguez, who was at the University of San Diego last year. He is a Glendale, Arizona native, played Mountain Ridge High School. Speaking of Arizona natives, the Tucson native, Zeke Alley, hits one out of two. Vikings just three of six at the line, or making three of seven at the line in the early going. 
And they trail by two. Bergen puts it on the deck, feeds it inside to Sorensen, back up top for a cool three-pointer, barely grazes the iron, and the rebound will pinball into the hands of Sorensen. Liam Sorensen out of Denmark in his second year of the program, injured after 12 games last year. That's a great look inside at corner for the beneficiary. Again, the interior is being attacked, and Khalid trying to attack on the other end, but that one rimmed out. Strong rebound by the 6A junior, Jared Rodriguez. So Sorensen taking over the point guard duties, averaging 7.2 points a contest. Cool feeds it inside. Porter right there at the rim again. Again, that is now 14 paint points already. Savvy move State. by Marlon Ruffin. <laughs> Ruffin with his first deuce. He's averaging his 10 points, primarily coming off the bench. On a season high, 26. On the road at CSUN, Cal State University Northridge. That was his first game coming off the bench. He was a starter in the early going. And was the leading scorer in Nebraska Omaha last year. Open three for Rodriguez, glances off, another offensive rebound. Bergen keeps it alive. That is now seven offensive rebounds in 12 minutes of basketball for the Bengals. Vikings have a knack for figuring it out in front of this home crowd, obviously. The bones in here are nice and sturdy, a fairly new building here at the Viking Pavilion. A tough play, place to play for opponents. Ido State has cashed in on five Portland State turnovers for eight points so far. Meanwhile, PSU just two points on five Idaho State turnovers, and there's number six. Khalid Thomas in there to force the hell ball. And possession belongs to Portland State. Good job by Khalid being aggressive again. This Vikings team can force turnovers with their ability to switch everything. And they're hard to kind of blow by, but when Idaho State gets the ball in the interior, that's where they've had success. Thomas second in the Big Sky Conference at steals, averaging over 1.8 per game. Outstanding game Thursday night. 17 points to five threes, also at eight boards, four assists, and a pair of steals against the Wildcats. Squire lost it on the way up. Four point Idaho State lane. Portland State won the first meeting of these teams. That was the Big Sky opener. And a rare Big Sky Conference opening win on the road for Portland State as Porter is fouled inside by the much smaller Zeke Allen. And he's been a handful so far for the Vikings. Porter already with eight points on four six shooting. Absolutely, just finding position in there and being aggressive. Knowing that that's where he can get some good money at. So far, it's working out for him. Porter averaging a little under eight points, four and a half rebounds per game, shooting 54% for the field. 6'5 senior from Phoenix. Named Idaho State from the College of Southern Idaho. And that's where Khalid Thomas excelled, considered one of the top JC prospects coming out of CSI before playing a season at Arizona State. Rodriguez from three, around and out, and Thomas snatches the rebound. In transition, Thomas gets Porter to fly by. Carter the third, blocked by Porter. Nice recovery there by Porter. Blocking that three-point attempt. And off target, entry pass intercepted by Ian Burke. This time a clean look for Thomas, too strong. A little bit flat on that jumper there from Thomas. Good to see him taking a confident stroke. Man. Absolutely. Last game, he was lighting it up from deep. Burke switches off on Sorensen. Rodriguez yet to find the touch from outside the arc. He's one of their better three-point shooters. Aaron pass intercepted by Alley. Alley, the lob for Thomas. Thomas on the connect. 
Zeke Alley, second on the team at assists. Khalid Thomas, second on the team at scoring. And now Rodriguez finds the touch. That was a pretty looking stroke there over the outstretched hands of MC3. Nice shot. Shooting over 38% from three is the first year junior. Carter going strong to the rim. Oh, man. And I know he wished he could have that one back. Good elevation, solid body control. Just couldn't get that thing to drop. Carter only missed two shots Thursday night, but not getting the friendly rolls early. And trying to come from behind. Smaley couldn't get around him and commits the foul. That's number four on the Vikings. Smart play by Smelly. Knowing that Carter the third was going to be aggressive, he went to the basketball to make sure that Carter the third would have had to go through him to be able to get a steal and go the other way. Instead, a foul is called on MC3. Paris Dawson and Jacob Lyman check in for Portland State. Tara Cool back on the floor along with Daxton Carr for Idaho State. 25-20. Bengals with their largest lead right now. Well, you can't sleep on any of these Big Sky Conference teams at this point in the season. Idaho State, Wallop, Montana, in Missoula earlier this year, and at the shot clock buzzer, Liam Sorensen able to get to the iron with the finger roll. Again, points in the paint. 18 of the Bengals, 27, have come from the inside. Well, that's not a good pass by Carter, and the Vikings catch a break as it goes off a Bengal foot out of bounds. Braxton, or Braden Parker, back on for Idaho State. Burley, six foot eight inch sophomore. The two players that came out of Preston, Idaho. Smaley, the other. Dawson finally breaks open on the inbounds pass. Squire going to work. Parker doing a good job moving the feet, but got a piece of him on the closeout. Well, he did everything well until the finish there. See here, Squire trying to yank Parker there on the step back cross. And he got him to play just as aggressive as he needed to on that move, being able to draw the foul on the jumper. Damian Squire. Leading the current Viking roster in scoring 11.4 points per game, but one of the things that have made this team so dangerous over the last month plus, any number of guys could step up and lead them in scoring on any given night. They're all dangerous off the bounce. You got to respect them at the three point line, despite the less than gaudy team shooting numbers. What is going on with the free throws tonight? Squire misses two. Vikings. On record pace, shooting over 75% of the line as a team, but off to a horrible start at the strike. First time that Squire has missed two free throws in a row this year. Sorensen rifles a pass to Carr in the corner. Cool, straight down the lane, and that shot adjusted by Iman, who pulls down the rebound. And that's why you need Iman in there. Makes things tough on the opposing team on the inside with the girt. Carter gets around Parker, too hard off the glass. Squire sneaks in there for the rebound, gets tangled up with a Bengal player. Ryan Looney wanting a held ball in possession. And the officials are going to get together and talk about it. You see no indication for the paint because they have so many effective penetrators as Squire gets another opportunity at the line look at this Man. <laughs> they are now three for nine uncharacteristic for Squire especially Damian Squire came in shooting 92 percent 35 of 38 on the season he is 0 for 3 cool picked up on the switch by Paris Dawson now Sorensen, that's a dangerous pass through traffic. Smaley makes it count. It's a long two, and we got a foul after the shot. And I think it's going against Portland State. The foul is on Ian Burke. Oh, wow. 
I'd have to see that again. Get a look at the replay here. Burke jostling for the rebound. Oh, yeah, he had wrapped up Parker around the waist. Yeah, and then they got tangled up. Rodriguez in the block. Now Parker steps outside. Rodriguez two in a row from downtown. And a six-point Idaho State swing. Now a 12-point lead as they double their advantage. 10-0 run for Idaho State in the last three minutes, give or take. They're starting to fill it offensively. Bengals continue to hold the Vikings to one and done. Rodriguez off the bounce. Short look, and it is off the iron for Cool. Another offensive rebound. Smaley pulls it down. Bengals are fourth in the Big Sky Conference in offensive rebounding. Offensive foul. Paris Dawson does it again. <laughs> That's his specialty, man. He steps in front of you. He sacrifices that body. And the refs tend to like what he does. Another charge drawn by Paris Dawson there. We'll sit now. Wholesale substitutions for Portland State. Allie Ruffin starts back into the game. And our first look tonight at six foot nine inch Hayden Curtis out of North Bend, Washington. First year Viking, a transfer from the north side of town, the University of Portland, where he played for Terry Porter last year. New coaching staff, entirely new team practically for Portland this year as former Eastern Washington head coach Shante Leggins has taken over that program. Curtis has shown flashes of great potential as Ruffin fouled on the drive down the lane. And that'll go against Liam Sorensen. So for Sorensen, that is his second foul. And he joins Cool and Carr with a pair of fouls. And Ruffin will get another shot at the line. Well, you talked about Ruffin earlier and his production off the bench for this Vikings team. They need a spark from him immediately, and he's trying to give it to him as the Vikings are down 12 here, making 11. Ruffin, former Big 8 Player of the Year at Sun Prairie High School in Madison, Wisconsin, played a season at Highland Community College, then two years at Nebraska-Omaha. Led them in scoring in 2020-21 at 13.1 points per game. And in the Summit League. That ends the Idaho State run, which was 12-0. Smaley, Bergen, Rodriguez, Porter, and now Emmett Taylor the third in there. We saw Taylor come in here and start sniping last year. He had four threes off the bench. One of his better games of the season. Baseline floater doesn't drop. Rodriguez gets his own miss. And a third try. He puts it home. That's how the rotation players were missing. Very depleted. Very depleted. So that'll be a whole different ball game. Plus that was right around the time of the, the change in approach for Portland State. Backdoor lob off the mark, intended for Thomas. And Rodriguez comes away with the basketball. Vikings uncharacteristically careless with the basketball in this first half. A reach in foul going on Zeke Alley on the floor. That's the Vikings' final foul to give. And that's his second. So they'll protect Alley for the final 37 seconds as Paris Dawson checks into the game. Emmett Taylor out of Lapua, Idaho. That's reservation country. You see that left arm sleeved and tats. Good shooter. He's a scorer. Still working on becoming a defensive player. And that wasn't much of a pass either. <laughs> he threw it right to Khalid Thomas. That was only a couple of players join the Vikings as true freshmen. Oh. 
three in fact, two rotation players, Paris Dawson. And uh, there's a nice floater by Michael Starks. Solid offensive half here for Michael Starks. Well, and you said it, anything they get from him offensively is a bonus. Shot on the run of the buzzer, doesn't go and Idaho and go from 10th into 8th place. And the Bengals will have the basketball to begin the second half. Liam Sorensen, Malik Porter, Jared Rodriguez, Austin Smelly, and that man, A.J. Berger. Rodriguez from three, around and out. The rebound to Damian Squire. Squire, Burke, Thomas, Alley, and Carter. Carter bumped on the drive. And that foul will go against Sorensen. So just like that, Liam Sorensen's got three fouls. He'll come out as Terry Cool pops off the bench. Looking to see who's going to come out as the aggressor offensively for this Vikings team. Obviously, going to need a jolt in the scoring column. Only 24 points in the first half, so they've got to try to get buckets here in the second. Smelling bangs the inbounds pass back over the line. Sorensen out of Denmark, second year in the program. Scored a dozen earlier this week and a loss at Northern Colorado. It's the third game of the week for Idaho State. They played Monday and Thursday. A win Thursday at Northern Arizona. A loss Monday at Northern Colorado. Squire elevates. That shot might have been blocked. Smaley comes away with a basketball. Tell you what, Smaley, one of those guys. You look at the stat sheet at the end of the night, and the numbers may not jump out at you, but he's he's got his hand in a lot of what's going on out there. Deflections, tips, rebounds, good three-point shooter, good defender. And the Vikings forced the turnover there, number 11 on Idaho State. See if Portland State could start cashing in on those giveaways. Around the Thomas screen, Alley free from three. It's his second triple. Well, if there's anybody that can get it done for this Vikings team offensively, Ezekiel Alley has proven to be one of those dudes. Nice shot there. Three more for Zeke Alley. He's got seven in the game, two of three from downtown. Porter trying to establish himself inside against Khalid Thomas. Lost the handle, then threw it away as Cool was cutting inside. Bergen's able to run it down. Cool's gonna have to get it away. Got iron, and two Vikings collide on that rebound. It goes out of bounds. But what happened? I thought it hit the backside of the backboard. That's but what it looked like. Apparently, Khalid Thomas touched it last. There's a break for Idaho State. Two teams that have not rebounded the ball particularly well this year, but Idaho State is dominating that department tonight. Smelly battling against Carter. And they're gonna catch Carter with the hold. That's his second. Austin Smelly out of Preston, Idaho, that's S-M-E-L-L-I-E, 6'5", -E, junior guard. Oh, somebody left Bergen wide open, and he makes the Vikings pay. Certainly the look you want if you're Bergen, couldn't ask for a better one, and he converted because of it. Squire before the shot is fouled. Yeah, and that'll be charged to Smaley. His second. And the second team foul for Idaho State. Michael Carter back of the ball outside the arc, guarded by the six foot eight inch Jared Rodriguez. Khalid Thomas had a scoring burst early. He's been quiet since then. And lost the basketball. That looked like it was touched by Idaho State last. And it'll go the Bengals' way. Too early to go to the monitor for something like that. Side, 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 side. 
Bergen looking for a second consecutive triple. Doesn't get her. Carter. Alley. Lot of contact. Porter with the rebound. Bengals just 7 and 20 this year. Khalid Thomas strips cool of the basketball. Now that was a major Achilles heel for Idaho State last year was turnovers. A squire well defended inside. Vikings will get it on the baseline. Certainly well defended. Squire had some hang time there, but defensively, Idaho State had just as much able to block the shot ball stand with the Vikings. Turnovers and offensive efficiency were the Bengals shortcomings last year, but not much there, but Jared Rodriguez is going to draw the, the whistle from Courtney Holmes, our officials tonight, Don Birdall, Jason Horsley, Courtney Holmes. Already the third Idaho State team foul, and Rodriguez will have to come out now. That was his second foul. Sorensen, the only player in this game with three. Alley blows past Smaley. A little extra pass. Carter can't get Smaley off his feet. Forced into a tough fadeaway. No good. Thomas lost it on the reverse attempt. Excellent defense from Smaley. Austin Smaley, he's just a disruptor, Pounce. Yeah. Yeah, he's everywhere for this Bengals team. Tarek Cool, the only one who scored in double figures when these teams played earlier this year. Porter knew he missed that, went after the rebound as soon as it left his hands. But Burke comes away with it. Now Carter erased by Daxton Carr. I'm not sure that's right. I don't know. I don't know what happened. The we officials didn't, didn't come to give us an explanation. They didn't come give us an explanation. I believe it was just a personal foul on Carr. And there's another Idaho State foul, so they are mounting for the Bengals as Ruffin is contacted on the sideline. Well, I may be wrong. If that if that were a personal foul, it should have been a shooting foul, right? On Carr, nonetheless. Well, Ezekiel Alley has something to say. Big shot. That's the third three-pointer for Zeke Alley. And the lead back to seven. Another double-digit game for the 6-1 senior guard, Ezekiel Alley. He was only averaging about six and a half points a game when these teams first met in December. Bergen challenged by Thomas. Swatted by Alley. Saved by Thomas. Back to Smaley. And he with 10 points leads all scorers. Smaley going to work inside against Ian Burke. Offensive foul called on Austin Smaley. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah, I don't I had a little bit of Chase Coburn in my line of sight, but <laughs> now, frankly, I didn't. What I could see, I didn't see that. I didn't see much there. That, <laughs> that was just a aggressive move in the paint, and he contacted Burke a little too hard in the chest, apparently. How about Ezekiel Alley, averaging over 18 points over the last seven games? The lob and an athletic finish for Khalid Thomas. Give the assist to Alley. Nice play. The Vikings still within just five, so we still got a tight one here at the Pavilion. Play yourself, play yourself. Cool, Porter, Rodriguez, Bergen, Carr, the Bengal quintet. Nearly another steal there for Khalid Thomas. He's joined by Squire, Ruffin, Burke, and Alley, and a foul at midcourt. <laughs> Thomas lobbying for a flop warning, but that will be a personal foul on Ezekiel Alley, and that is his third. Certainly a bailout foul there. Probably about five seconds left on the shot clock. And obviously, uh, it, was, it was six seconds left on the shot clock when the foul was called. And obviously, it didn't look like a bucket was in the near future, at least within six seconds. 
Chase Colburn going to stick with Allen. Tara Cool, well defended by Thomas, and that forced the turnover. Vikings coming out of the timeout, picking up their intensity. You mentioned a lot of this game, it seems as if the Bengals have just played a bit harder than the Vikings have, but they're trying to flip the switch after the last break. Well, they're starting to cash in on those turnovers as well, Pounce. That's the fourth turnover the second half. Vikings already five points off those turnovers. Looking for more here. Squire, 10 on the shot clock. Hangs in the air, can't score off the glass. Porter snatches the rebound. Damian Squire has been held in check. Just two points so far on 0-4 shooter. Long pass, Alley got in the way, but it's collected in backcourt by Berger. Look at Alley. He's playing with three fouls, so he's got to be sensible here. Bergen launching from way downtown. He likes his bump uncut. My goodness, Bergen knocking it down from the motor center there, but right back catches as he's in you out. Game on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like it. Bergen had four seconds on the shot clock and launched from way downtown, and then Allie with a lovely athletic finish inside. He's got a dozen. Vikings extending that pressure on the perimeter. Squire, shading cool, laying in wait is Thomas. They got the mismatch with Porter. Doubling down is Burke. Porter splits the double team. Ball stripped away by Squire. Ruffin to Thomas. Foul on the layup. Again, and that's on. That's on Rodriguez, number three on Jared Rodriguez. Good effort that time. Digging in was Damian Squire able to poke the ball away. Ruffin obviously took it to the other end, dumped it off to Khalid. He gets fouled, and here he is. And Idaho State up to 16 turnovers now. Oh, you think Portland State doesn't want a few of these foul shots back? A team shooting over 75% at the line now, 5 of 12 in the night. And they've been sending their best foul shooters to the strike. But they've been able to snip a 12-point advantage down to five. Yeah, as Khalid Thomas will sit. Jacob Iman in at the five for Portland State. More of a traditional five man, a shot swatter. Iman out of... Los Alamitos, California, second year Viking, transferred into the program from Fullerton College, where he played in 2019 20. Started 28 games there. Became a starter by the end of last year and actually led the Big Sky Conference in block shots in conference play. Averaging over a block a game for Portland State, but only his second game back after a nine game injury layoff. Alley making life miserable for Rodriguez on the baseline. And Cool fouled with two seconds on the shot clock. Only the fourth team foul on Portland State. That'll be assessed to him. Two teams that definitely pride themselves on defense. And it's showing. I mean, just 40 to 35 here is the score. Both teams holding it down on that side of the floor. Two rugged guards there, Bergen and Starks. Bergen's got a bit of a size advantage. And Starks too aggressive. Portland State's on number 33, Michael Starks. That's five team fouls on Portland State. Vikings already in the bonus with seven Idaho State fouls. And foul trouble starting to become an issue. As the Bengals with three players with three fouls, Carr, Rodriguez, and Sorensen. Alley continues to play with three fouls for Portland State. That's going to be on Marlon Ruffin, grabbing hold of Parker. And Jace Colburn's heard enough whistles for one possession. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. But Marlon definitely grabbed hold there. Parker, 
6'8 sophomore, a lot of Idaho natives on this team. Look at Allie. Up, oh, there's number four. Again, too much time on the clock to be playing that aggressively with three fouls. 12 minutes to go, we got a break in the action and Alley is gonna be belted on the bench for a while. Seventh Portland State team foul, 40 to 35, Idaho State back after this on ESPN Plus. Vikings once trailed by 12, they have fought to within five, but really a senseless foul by Ezekiel Alley. His fourth personal with 11.58 to go. He has to sit now. And the Vikings, who have committed four fouls on this Idaho State possession, sent Daxton Carr to the line for one and one. We got 12 minutes to go. Both teams in the bonus already. Daxton Carr, not a good foul shooter. 57.6% at the line. And got the shooter's touch there. That's only the second free throw attempt of the night for the Idaho State Bengals. They are two for two. Meanwhile, Portland State has traipsed to the line 13 times, just six points to show for it. One out of two as Ruffin clears the glass. Squire, Ruffin, Starks, Burke, and Iman for Portland State. Parker, Sorensen, Rodriguez, Bergen, and Carr for Idaho State. Burke works his way around Rodriguez. Outside the arc to Ruffin. Back to Burke. Lines up a three. That is off the iron. No good. And Ruffin wisely pulls his hands back. Last touched by Idaho State. Well, Pouts, Burke was on a scoring tear coming back from COVID yeah. over a three-game stretch, but he has been silenced since then. Teams... Definitely rolling a little more defensive attention his way. He has scored just 12 points combined over the past three. Damian Squire dials it in from distance. Squire hasn't been scoring a ball much in this game, but certainly got to be careful. He can explode at any given moment. Rodriguez from the top can't hit the three. Squire runs down the rebound. Vikings could tie it with a three. Burke on the dribble, fouled on a reach in. And that'll be the eighth team foul on Idaho State. Bergen picks up his second foul. Burke will go to the line for the Vikings. Phoenix native. Brophy Prep, Premier Region Player of the Year back in 2017-18. Started three years, perfect four-point GPA. And to Seattle University. Came to Portland State two seasons ago. And has one year of eligibility remaining. 6-5 guard, one out of two. Another free throw miss for the Vikings. A two-point game, close as it's been in a while. Sorensen looking inside to Parker against the smaller rough. Oh, great footwork. Great footwork. Nice drop step. Finishing with the left hand. Beautiful play. That ends a 6-0 Viking run. Now Ruffin backing his way inside. Hyman blocked from behind by Parker. Sorensen calmly handling the harassing D. Big, strong 6'4 freshman guard from Denmark. Rodriguez, double. Parker stepping out. No. Squire pushes it straight to the iron. Can't finish. Burke had him momentarily. Parker said, it's mine. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> with, with quite the bit of ease, too. <laughs> Smaley, offensive foul. That was definitely an offensive foul. I didn't like the earlier call. Certainly went right into the chest of Ian Burke. And 
A good call indeed. Got a timeout on the floor, 940 left. Four point lead for the Bengals. Oh, no, we're gonna keep it right here, beg yeah. your pardon. 940 remaining in the game, Portland State now trailing by four. Squire to Starks. He's been shooting it well tonight, but not from three there. Squire trying to keep the rebound alive. It was poked out of Cool's hands off the underside of the board. He'll stay with the Bengals. Mentioned Ryan Looney over 350 career victories. Former head coach at Point Loma Nazarene and Seattle Pacific. This is his first Division I head coaching position. He was 330 and 132, a 714 winning percentage at the Division II and NAIA level. Step back three, Bergen gets to the iron, that's it. Ruffin, too strong. Iman working hard, clobbered on that rebound. This is the most physical game we've seen in this gym all season long. Absolutely, both teams giving it their all here. Not much scoring as a result of it, but certainly part of the reason why the game is so low scoring is because they're just giving max effort on the defensive side of the floor, especially. Ten team fouls on Idaho State. That's the fourth on Rodriguez. So I'm in shooting two. Jacob Iman, just 44% at the line, but touches nothing but twine there. So Rodriguez sits. Daxton Cryer checks in. Iman, 16 blocks in 15 games played this year. Had started the previous four games before going down with a, a knee injury that kept him out for nine games. His best game this season came at Southern Utah. A 22 point performance. And I'm not sure what we got going on here. Jace Coburn. Wondering about the stoppage. Ryan Looney not happy about something. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on and what that was all about. I'm in shooting a second free throw. That dies in the back of the eye. Oh, the missed free throw is really hurting the Vikings tonight. Yeah, they have certainly struggled there. 8 to 17. Well, they're down three if they're shooting their usual percentage. They're in the lead right now. Much like Weber State, a lot of size, a lot of length on the perimeter on this Idaho State team. Strong move to the baseline. Parker's starting to have an impact. He's playing decisive in there. As soon as he gets the ball, he's looking to attack, and it's working out. 50% shooter on the season, Braden Parker. Ruffin trying to finish through contact, can't get it to go. Parker there to swallow up the rebound. So the Vikings have gotten that lead down to two. And now Idaho State looking to extend a five-point advantage with eight minutes to play. Sorensen isolated against Starks. Baseline cut, cool. Banks it home. Foul. Flags there. Tara Cool. Shooting one, looking for his second three-point play of the night, and he's got it. Cool, 66% foul shooter on the season. A 48-40 Idaho State leader. Michael Carter the third, who has been on the bench since the technical foul. Nothing falling for him tonight, but the helper there is Khalid Thomas. Big time play by Khalid, much needed basket for the Vikings. With that deuce, Thomas now with 13 points to lead all scorers. Tara Cool has nine. Four other Bengals with eight points tonight. Ezekiel Alley, again, sitting with four fouls, has 12 points for Portland State. Porter backing in on Ruffin. That just 
away from the fingertips of Thomas. Sorensen lines up a three, rattles on. Down the floor, Carter, fouled by Cool. Nice look up the street from Damian Squire. Carter able to go in there, draw the contact, and he's got a chance to shrink the deficit a bit more. Damian Squire not scoring a lot for the Vikings tonight, but five rebounds. He's tied with Jacob Iman for team lead. Jared Rodriguez with nine boards. Part of a team effort for Idaho State. But he is on the bench with four fouls. Austin Smaley also with four fouls. Zeke Alley with four fouls. So fouls having a big impact on this game. Let's see if the Vikings can finally get a pair at the line. No, another miss. But Burke keeps it alive. Thomas. Fouled by Porter. More free throws. Just got to convert at the line, <laughs> like you said. If they're just shooting their average, then uh, they'd probably be in the lead in this one. Only the first foul in Malik Porter. And Khalid Thomas, a 75% foul shooter to the strike. Thomas, one of his best offensive games of the season Thursday night, and really a fine all-around performance against Weber State. As he's finding his scoring groove here down the stretch of the regular season. Finally, two for two at the line. And it's a one possession lead once again. Vikings 11 for 21 at the foul line. And a trap at midcourt forces Liam Sorensen into a timeout. Let's take a timeout as well. That 30 second Idaho State timeout will extend to full with 6.46 to go. 48 45 Bengals at the pavilion. Six forty six to go in a good battle here at Viking Pavilion tonight. Idaho State led by 12 in the first half. They had a six point possession to double a six point lead. Vikings immediately set to work on a 10 point halftime deficit. They have forced Seven second half turnovers, turning those into eight points. And after the Vikings gave up eight points off turnovers to Idaho State in the first half, the Bengals have yet to score off a Viking giveaway in the second stanza. Porter forced into a tough shot, able to fight for his own rebound, and eventually is fouled. I believe that's on Marlon Ruffin. And it is. That's where Idaho State has had the edge tonight. On the glass, 37 to 25 in rebounds. That was their 14th offensive board. But the Vikings have been hitting the offensive glass in this second half. They're up to 10 now. Porter not one of their better foul shooters and cannot hit the front end. So another chance to tie it with a three for Portland State. Three point shots tonight. The Vikings four for 11. Idaho State just five of 19. Carter for the tie. Rims off. Oh, I know you want that one back to give Michael Carter the third. Carter cannot buy a bucket tonight. He's 0 for 5, still scoreless. The 6 10. Thomas switching off on Cool. Now Porter, out to Carr, air ball on the three, and did Bergen throw that off Thomas? What a play. Very, very heavy play there by Bergen. Three seconds on the shot clock for Idaho State, but they'll get another shot here. Cool to inbound. Tara Cool became the 24th Bengal to score a thousand points in his career earlier this week. Underneath to Porter, and was that touched on the iron? Yeah, I don't know about that one. Too close to call, I guess, for the official. 
Looked like a fingertip. Maida grazed the orange, but it'll count. 40 to 45 to score. Carter and one. His first points of the night. And that's his move. Drive towards the middle of the painted area. Spin off of you. And he's got a chance at a three-point play the old-fashioned way. The foul is on Liam Sorensen, and that is his fourth foul. Michael Carter in the line, shooting one. One time. This could be a war of attrition down the final five minutes tonight. So Sorensen comes out. Emmett Taylor the third, who played briefly off the bench. One turnover, no shots. Checks in. And Carter hits the free throw. Vikings have hit four of their last five at the line. Once again, a one possession game with 5.28 to go. Michael Carter the third, two nights after leading the Vikings with 19. Doesn't score until nearly the five minute mark, but he came up big at the end of the game Thursday night. Who's gonna make the clutch plays tonight for the black and orange or the white and green? Tarek Cool gets Thomas off his feet and draws a foul. Yeah, smart play by Terry Cool. A veteran play, you know the officials are whistle happy here tonight. Both teams in the double bonus already. And he was able to get Khalid off of his feet, draw a little bit of contact. Here he is at the line to shoot a pair. Cool, two free throws tonight. Both have come on three point plays. He's got nine points, averaging 12 a game on the season. Third team all Big Sky Conference selection. One of three Bengals on the all conference team last year. Led the team in scoring at 14 a game. Again, Idaho State has been without one of their top players since early December. Robert Ford III, the former Jefferson Democrat, as Cool can only get one out of two. They dealt with a number of injuries. Cool missed a couple of games. Pull up Jay by Thomas, a little too strong. Burt soars in for the rebound. To the cutting squire, he is fouled. Well, this is a lot like Thursday night pounce where the Vikings got creamed on the glass in the first 20 minutes and then in the second half, they were able to worm their way in there and get a lot of key offensive rebounds. It comes to a point where you realize you don't have a choice but to get in there. That's obviously probably not natural when you have so many guards on the floor to have them all crashing the boards until you start getting pounded on the boards and you realize, you know what? I got to get in there and make something happen and dig some rebounds out. Well, bad news for Idaho State. The free throws starting to fall for the Vikings. And all fouls are going to be two shot deals the rest of the way. Yep. Squire converts both. One point game. Oh, cool try to wrap around pass. Carter got in the way. And a held ball in that court. Possession will stay with Idaho State. Oh, Carter nearly got a steal right underneath the rim. Carl will bring it in for the Bengals. Each two, well, two timeouts left for Idaho State. Vikings with three timeouts remaining. Now with the possession arrow as well. And a lot of players in foul trouble. Again, trouble getting the ball in there. Carter's got to be careful now. He's already got a technical foul. Got to bite that lip. Just five seconds on the shot clock, too, for Idaho State to get the ball across half court. Let's see if they're aware of that. Matt Bergen will do the smart thing and push it up the floor. He's got Ian Burke in his hip pocket. A little confusion on the Vikings defense. Idaho State not looking to exploit. They're running shot clock. Third defender switches off on Cool and an unforced turnover. Right as a pass out of the reach of Emmett Taylor, who wasn't ready for it. It just wasn't a smart pass from Terry Cool. A one handed pass across the court. He was better off trying to create himself to go get a bucket rather than turn it over and not getting the shot. Yeah, it's those kind of silly turnovers that hurt Idaho State last year. 
Vikings now can take the lead. Thomas puts it on the deck against Porter. Switches to the left. Counter the foul. You know it, baby. What a play by the senior, Khalid Thomas, in his final home game tonight. The Vikes trying to protect the house. And the fans are here for a nice take there by Khalid, giving the Vikings the lead. That foul on Malik Porter is third. Vikings grab the lead. Khalid Thomas trying to make it a two-point advantage, and he does. Vikings pressure, making it tough on Idaho State here. That is the first Viking lead since it was 11 to 10. Trouble in backcourt. Cool will get it across. And Squire out of control collides with Cool on the drive. That'll be two shots for Terry Cool. And we'll get a cooling off period here. <laughs> 352 to go. Don't go anywhere. Vikings 53, Bengals 51. Two-point Portland State lead. Tara Cool trying to draw the Bengals even. Khalid Thomas with a three-point play to put the Vikings in front now with a game-high 18 points. And once you know it, the two seniors playing their final games tonight, leading the way for the Vikings. Thomas with 18. Zeke Alley with a dozen, but Alley has been on the bench since the 12-minute mark with four fouls. Cool the line two for two and now five for six he's got a dozen tied at 53 a win for Portland State they could be tied with Eastern Washington in the sixth spot Carter his second bucket of the night Vikings back in front that's what you call a big guard Michael Carter third getting into the interior he's usually taller than his defender Score right over the top of them there. An Idaho State win. They jump from 10th to 8th in the standings tonight. Sorensen back in with four fouls. Rodriguez also playing with four fouls. Five on the shot clock. A desperation heave. It's the side of the backboard. Turnover, Idaho State. Vikings ball with a two-point lead, and here comes Zeke. Good defensive possession there by the Vikings. And the Bengals seem to be a little bit rattled here. Haven't scored in the last 238. 19th turnover for Idaho State. Nine second half turnovers. The points off turnovers. 12 nothing in favor of the Vikings in the second half. And when I say haven't scored, that's in field goal terminology. They have made free throws. Vikings have turned the ball over only twice in the second half. Thomas for three. Loose ball, Alley's got it. Right at Sorensen, looking to draw contact, but kind of whiffed right past him. Look at that, oh, Cool doesn't take the three, the extra pass to Rodriguez. He bypasses the three and goes to the flow game. Nice take, nice finish from Rodriguez. They're tied at 55. Five ties, seven lead changes tonight. Most of the ties and lead changes coming in the first 10 minutes of this game. Carter going to work against Sorensen. He's got four fouls, and Carter coming alive now. I'll say it again, when you're a 6'5 guard and you can get into that paint, it's easy to elevate over defenders and finish. And Carter the third is putting that on display here late in the contest. All right, a strong finish to the game Thursday night. Coming up large for the Vikings in crunch time again. Tarek Cool, the veteran. Now in his third season in Pocatello. Lobbing it for Porter. Carter fronting. Are they going to call Carter for a foul here? Backing in? Oh, mercy. That's his fourth. Yeah. I don't know if I like that call so much. We're going to look at it here. I don't know. I, that's no foul in my book. 
I think the foul was called if I had to give a reason because Carter was on the ground obviously trying to get up to recover to regain position and he had to move Porter to be able to do so. I'm assuming that's why the whistle was blue. Again Porter not a good foul shooter just a little over 50 percent on the season he's 0 for 1 on the night. I don't know state just seven trips to the line they're four for seven. Vikings have hit 15 out of 25 of the strike. That one barely top middle. Well, that's as loud as we've heard it in this arena this season. Yeah, the ship is rocking. Somebody's been thrown out of the game. Michael Carter III has just been ejected. And Jace Colburn is going to tear somebody's head off right now. Michael Carter III in on the free throw line has been assessed a technical foul, which is his fifth personal. And the Vikings need to cool off right here. They need to cool off. You got to win. You got to win. That's what it's all about. Again, we have seen Carter lose his composure at times this year. A gifted player. But that could be costly. Not only giving additional free throws to Idaho State, but just when he's making an impact in this game, he's got to go. And Jace Colburn fit to be tied right now. Fit to be tied. That is the best way to put it. Don't know what was said there underneath from Carter the third. Might have made a smart Alec remark after the missed free throw. And Sperry will shoot the technicals. So Carter picks up his fourth personal foul, then the technical for his fifth. And Smelly makes sure that maximum pain is inflicted. Colburn really giving a piece of his mind to head referee Don Bertle right now. Well, it sounded like nothing was actually said from my part of the third. I don't know what kind of gesture he may have made that got him that technical and kicked out, but. It was Bertle the game, Carter the thumb. The southpaw quarter makes it a three point possession and a one point Idaho State lead. Unbelievable. That foul on Rodriguez, he's done. The madness of March coming a couple of days too soon. Yep, that war, <laughs> that war of attrition has begun here in the final two minutes. Yes. Carter is out, now Rodriguez picks up his fifth foul. And Khalid Thomas following up on the momentum of Thursday night as 20, trying to make it 21 and a two point Viking lead. Thomas leads all scores. Cool with 12, leading three and double figures for Idaho State. And Thomas Cool is the other side of the pillow at the line. Minute 37 to go, two point Viking lead. Everybody getting their money's worth in the final home game. Porter, back cut, Sorensen scores it, tie game. Nice back cut, good find from Porter, and a tie game here. Viking ball, tied at 60. Starks, Thomas, Burke, Alley, Squire. Burke looking for Thomas, pushed out of the paint. He's got the big advantage over Cool. Porter, showing double, 10 on the shot clock. Thomas, baseline floater, yeah, no team. offensive foul. Got the off arm out in front. Yeah, he did. That's the right call. That's 
the right ball. Terry Cool draws the charge. Yeah, no doubt about yeah, that. Can't do that. For Colleen Thomas, only his second foul. Carter the third, disqualified. Alley playing with four. Smaley and Sorensen, each playing with four fouls. Sorensen with the ball in his hands right now. Vikings still have the possession arrow in their favor. Shot clock under 10. Cool, through a double team, threw it away, intercepted by Burke. Shot clock is off. Vikings can play for the win. Crowd rising to its feet at the pavilion. Portland State looking for its fifth consecutive home win. Squire to the bucket. No basket. Overtime. Cool. And Smiley. Thomas and Porter in the center circle. Tip won by the 6'10", Khalid Thomas. And Michael Starks will start the first offensive possession of overtime for Portland State. Tied up at 60. Only the second overtime game of the year for PSU. They lost to Southern Utah at home earlier this season. Alley, step back three off the iron, no good. And Smelly runs down the rebound. Austin. Smelly, seven boards, six points. Tough defense. Liam Sorensen backing in on the 6'10 Thomas. Boy, how about that? Unfazed. Nice drop step and finish there by Sorensen. Could be a name to watch in the Big Sky Conference. He's just a freshman. He's got some game. Squire backing in on Smelly. Boy, he does a good job of staying anchored. Yes, he does. Crossover. And leads into cool. Count the bucket and a foul for Ezekiel Alley. And then he flexed up to let it let folks know he's here. Nice cross. Good body control per usual. And a good finish for Ezekiel Alley. And that's the fourth foul on Tara Cool. Alley. Has been knocking him down at the line, shooting 87% during the last seven games. A period in which he has averaged over 18 a game. And the Vikings, after a tough start at the free throw line, now finding their stroke. They take the lead, 63-62 with 3.52 to go in overtime period number one. Ezekiel Alley now with 15 points in the game. Alley trying to front Smaley inside. Sorensen harassed on the perimeter by Squire. Ball circuits the perimeter to Cool. Smaley comes to the near side. Still guarded by Allen. Backing in on the smaller defender. Out to Carr. Burke the closeout. Carr takes the baseline instead and lays it in with three on the shot clock. And the interior is where Idaho State has had success tonight. Nice take there by Carr. Daxton Carr with a smooth conversion just Three points for him tonight. Alley can't get the bite of the iron, and Sorensen pulls down the board. Into the post they go. Smaley, offensive foul. He's done. Three of his five fouls have been called on the offensive end, and Idaho State has lost another key player. Yeah, his activity has meant a lot to the Bengals here tonight. But I guess you could say he's had a little bit too much activity out there as he's now done. Well, again, a lot of whistles tonight. In my book, that's a travel. Yeah, it looked like the chair was kind of pulled there from Damian Squire, but the official thought it was player control instead. So no more smelly for that. Bergen will come in to replace him. So the fourth-year junior veteran Austin Smelly departs. The true freshman out of San Diego, A.J. Bergen, replaces him. Smelly, seven points a game, but uh, he gives you a little of everything. A couple of assists, good rebounder, a long guard at 6'5", who's a tough defender. That's a key loss. 
Now under three minutes to play. Vikings with the ball down one. Starks, given distance by Sorensen. Thomas trying to post up cool inside. Alley rolls it to him. Up and over the top, too strong. Got his own miss, follows good. That's next level basketball for me, Thomas. That's next level basketball. The lead swings back Portland State's way, 65 to 64. Now we're still a week and change away from playoff basketball in the Big Sky Conference. Ooh, Khalid Thomas looked like maybe a clean strip. Got a little bit of skin. Well, give credit to the officials tonight. They've been consistently called. That's a clean steal right yeah, there. Yeah, that looked pretty clean. I think Cool was able to sell it, though. That's just about being a vet, being experienced. <laughs> and instead of a turnover being caught there, he's at the line trying to retake the lead for the Bengals. Cool, not a particularly good foul shooter, but he has been tonight. He's hit six or seven. And for Khalid Thomas, three fouls on the night. Ryan Looney will spend a timeout with 2.03 to go in overtime. So two timeouts left for Idaho State. Portland State has three timeouts remaining. Right now the possession arrow belongs to the Bengals. Both teams long since have been in the double bonus. Two Idaho State players disqualified with fouls, Austin Smelly and Jared Rodriguez, both starters. Two more with four fouls, Liam Sorensen and Terry Cool. For Portland State, Michael Carter the third fouled out with eight points all in the second half, all in the final six minutes of the second half. And Zeke Alley plays with four fouls. Khalid Thomas, the game's leading scorer, 23 points on nine to 17, five of six at the line, seven rebounds for Thomas. That also leads the way for the Vikings. And Cool now up to 14 points for Idaho State on three of nine shooting. Half of his 14 points have come at the line on eight attempts. Cool with six assists to go with his 14 points. Malik Porter has 11 for Idaho State. There are two games left for the Vikings next week on the road. Idaho State has its final game of the year in Pocatello on March the 3rd against Southern Utah. Thunderbirds idle tonight. They sit in second place at 12 and 5. Here we go. Viking ball with 203 to go. In overtime number one. Damian Squire working against the freshman. The Montreal native backing him to San Diego. A three from Burke in route. Rims off, Burke in the rebound. With that miss, Portland State. Now 4-15 from three on the night. Give credit to Idaho State. Tough defense tonight, a team that hasn't guarded like they did last year despite similar personnel. Sorensen a tough pass. Porter walked with the basketball and got away with it. Took a bunny hop backwards. And the Vikings got to push it. Still a one possession game though. Thomas out to Burke. Tell you one thing Idaho State does very well defensively is guard that three point line. And is Squire going to get the continuation call here? They count the basket. Big oh boy, tank. that's, it depends on when they called the foul. I thought that whistle blew when he was on the floor. There was contact during the shot as well, but I could have sworn that hand came up and the whistle blew when he was still on the dribble. And I'll say it again, that rule needs to change. Yes, I agree. Give the officials a break and let's have continuation to college basketball, please. Squire, another free throw miss. 
And Idaho State hangs on to the lead. So uncharacteristic for a squire. Four of eight from the free throw line tonight. That foul was on Daxton Carr. Actually, beg your pardon, it was on Bergen. Sorensen, spin in the air, threw it away. Thomas ahead of the pack. Carr challenges. Orleans State looking for its seventh win in the last nine games. And the Vikings will get another possession. Jacob Iman out of the perimeter moving his feet. Starts denying cool the pass. See if the officials swallow their whistles here for the final 30. Sorensen well guarded by Burke. Bass line cut. Carter packed at the rim. Hell ball. And the Bengals have the possession arrow with eight seconds to on the shot clock. And that's exactly why you have Jacob Byman at the floor, to defend the rim, and he did just that. Jacob Byman averaging over a block a game, and a huge one there. As the timeout spent by Ryan Looney leaves him with one in the bag, with 16.7 seconds left, eight seconds on the shot clock. Jacob Iman, the Big Sky Conference's leading shot blocker in 2020-21. You wondered how his return would impact the great chemistry this team has developed in his and Jean Marie's absence, going with a primarily guard-oriented lineup. But Iman has brought the goods when necessary. Absolutely, and you know that Idaho State's going to attack. It's sort of where they've gotten their bread and butter at tonight, so. A smart move by head coach Chase Coburn to put Ivan in for that defensive possession there. Obviously made a big time play, but got to try and make another one with just eight seconds left on the shot clock. The freshman Bergen will bring it into the baseline. Out to Porter. Cool. Into the lane. Tough shot. He's fouled. No! Offensive foul! Michael starts, draws the charge. And that's it for Cool. Big time play, Michael Starks. Sacrificing the body, drawing the foul. So the third Bengal to foul out. Their leading scorer, Terry Cool, departs with 14 points. See if we can get another look at the replay on that. And the question is, did Starks get positioned before Cool went in the air? He most certainly did. Yeah, he did. That's a good take. Absolutely the right call. That was the right call indeed. Both of these teams showing a lot of grit tonight. And entering the game for the first time tonight, 6'6 freshman guard from Malaga, Spain, Pablo Tampa. So the attrition affecting Idaho State more than Portland State. They have lost three to fouls. The Vikings have lost one. Full court pressure on the inbound. In it comes to Squire. Squire ahead to Thomas, to the rim, lays it home. Vikings by three. Still a one possession game. And a timeout called by Jace Colburn, probably a smart Time out here to remind his team that this is still a one possession game. You yep. got the sense of that being a put away bucket. It was anything but with 7.2 seconds left. Well, we've seen it happen here before. You remember back in the Southern Utah game, it was a three point lead. Southern Utah pushes it down the floor. Dre Marine knocked down a three pointer to send the game in the extra minutes in that one. So I think Coach Coburn might have learned from that experience, and he wants his defense to be set to try to have the best possible chance at getting a stop here and get a W in their last home game. Yeah, overtime has not been uh, particularly kind to the Vikings here at the arena. That's their only overtime game of this year, of course. Last year it was Robbie Beasley of Montana that yep. had a buzzer beater from half court to send the game into overtime. The game eventually won by the Grizz as they split their two games here. 
Vikings trying to even their overtime record. Not only that, looking to even their conference record. And the quick foul by Damian Squire. So Vikings opting to foul rather than give up a three-point shot. And that foul might have come a little prematurely. Yeah, passed. just a little. I mean, you could have ran a second or two more off the clock, which every second matters a whole lot now. You just got six seconds remaining here. But ideally, you want to wait till they're in four court before you get up that foul. Sorensen. That's a big miss. It's a huge miss. Colburn will get Jacob Iman in there for rebounding. Ian Burke comes, now he wants somebody else. Starts will come out. So now, the Vikings can essentially end this game at the foul line. As that makes it a two-point game, back comes Tomba, out goes Taylor. And the yo-yo substitutions continue for both teams. The Starks re-enters for Portland State, replacing Iba. Now, Idaho State, you give up a foul, but if the Vikings hit them both at the line, that's essentially it. So there's the foul. It'll be Alley at the stripe with 4.7 seconds left. Tomba gives up the foul. And Zeke Alley, a 78% foul shooter, will go to the line. On the night, Alley is three for five. A miss, and it leaves a window open for Idaho State. <laughs> if he makes this one, that'll just about seal it. Zeke Alley and Khalid Thomas coming up huge on senior night. A combined 43 points, make it 44. <laughs> Struggles at the free throw line all night until the final six and a half minutes of regulation and overtime. And those free throws put it away. Pull